Hello, everybody. I'm Adrian Cronier, the president of the Atlanta Rotary Club, and I'm here today with President Stephanie Urchik, the president of Rotary International. Stephanie, welcome, and thank you for flying down to spend a whole day with us. I'm sure you're all exhausted already. Well, it's my pleasure to be here. I appreciate the invite. We had a wonderful program talking a lot about your vision for Rotary, which you call the magic of Rotary. We had a lot of other district club members here today. I'm curious as to your impression about the Atlanta Rotary Club. What struck you? As I looked around that room and I saw all those smiling faces, I couldn't help but think, what a gift to the communities that these Rotarians represent because every Rotarian is exactly that. It's a gift to the community. I think that's well said. You know, what we tried to accomplish today was to foster everybody feeling welcome and included, and hopefully to catalyze collaboration across our district on many of the common themes that um, we can tackle as Rotarians. Why don't you tell us a little bit more about the magic of Rotary then? Well, I think an, an interesting story is where it even came from. You mm -hmm. know, uh, many years ago, I was with my district in the Dominican Republic, and we had traveled there to put in biowater sand filters. So we were um, providing clean water to families. And I was in a Haitian home, and there were five individuals, two women, a grandmother and a mother, and three little boys. So I put the filter together, and then my job was to show them how to keep it clean and then to test it. And so as I was testing it, what we did was put dirty water in one end and it came out clean the other side. And I put in dirty water again, came out clean the other side. When I stopped doing the test, one of the little boys ran up to me and he tugged on my sleeve and he said, lady, lady, show me that magic again. Wow. And I realized that the water filter wasn't magic. What was magic was the way that life would change for that family. Those little boys could go back to school. The women didn't have to walk for miles to find water. That was the magic. And it dawned on me that every single Rotarian is involved in something or has been involved in something that creates magic in some way. So I chose the magic of Rotary, and it's been overwhelmingly received around the world. Well, it's a beautiful and inspiring theme. Talk about making a sustainable impact. You know, we've set ourselves the theme for the year being engaging and impacting as only the Atlanta Rotary Club can. And it doesn't always take grand gestures to make a difference, right? Each and every day, a Rotarian can make a lasting impact to change a life and community. Absolutely, that's, that's what service above self means. It means taking a look at life somewhere, in the community, in, in your club, in the world, and, and looking at it and, and saying, what can I make better? Right. And that's what Rotary Service is all about, making life better. When I think about the thousands and thousands and thousands of children who will be immunized in the, in the next six months, it, we're making life better for those young people. They're going to be walking through the streets of their communities instead of having to deal with a crippling disease. When I think about people who, who receive education and learn how to read, when I think about uh, women who learn a skill so that they can provide for their family, mm -hmm. I mean, there's so many things that Rotarians do, and it's all answering that same question, what can I make better for someone? Yeah, I think that's well said. For so many people all over the world, the Rotary brand is associated with our signature initiative of eradicating polio. Talk a little bit about where we're at with regard to that and what the opportunities might be going forward. When I joined Rotary, wild polio virus was in over 125 countries. Now it's in two. And it's not even the entire country. We're talking about the mountainous region on the border between Pakistan and Afghanistan. So at one time, there were 325,000 cases of polio every year. When we started this project in the mid 80s, today we have 18. We've wow. made incredible progress. But it's not done until we have zero cases. We need zero cases so that we can keep the promise that we've made to children of the world. And when that happens, we really will celebrate. What can existing Rotarians in our district do to make sure that we get to that goal? 
Well, certainly um, financial support is still needed because as you can imagine, you know, we have to buy vaccine, we have to, uh, you know, buy carriers for the vaccine. So there's a, a financial commitment that's important and also advocacy. Mm -hmm. Sometimes just reminding other people in our clubs about the importance of this promise. You know, when I hear the statistic about how few Rotarians contribute to polio eradication, it's, it's awful. It's really awful. So we need to advocate with our own club members, as well as people in the community, as well as governments, and, and, and also to support. Well, we'll take up that challenge. We have a program around that slated in the coming months for our club, and uh, hopefully we will get other members of the community involved with that as well. That's good to hear. So um, many people who will be listening to this podcast may be thinking about joining Rotary. Um, I'm, I can hardly believe it, but I think you're the, only the second women president of Rotary International. Is that correct? I am. Jennifer Jones from Canada was the first, and I am the second. And in my mind, it shouldn't be an issue anymore. Gender should not be right. anything that we consider. It's who's the best person for the right. job. Tell, tell listeners a little bit about your story, how you came to be a Rotarian, and how you ascended through the ranks so quickly. Well, I don't know if it was quickly. I've been in Rotary for 33 years, but um, I became a Rotarian basically the same way that most Rotarians did. Somebody asked me to come to a meeting. They asked me to join. I was working at a state university in Pennsylvania, and a woman walked into my office and said, would you like to come to a Rotary meeting? And I looked at her and said, well, what's Rotary? I don't know what that is, because I had never heard of it before. Nobody in my family had been in a service club, so it was new to me. So she gave me her elevator pitch about all the different things that Rotary does. And when she got to the international part, I was really intrigued because that happened to be my major in college. Uh, growing up, I wanted to work for one of the alphabets, FBI, CIA, NSA, <laughs> any of them. But that's another story for another podcast. Um, so I said to her, sure, I'll go to a meeting. So I went to a meeting, and I went to a second meeting. And then by the fourth meeting, they had me doing the newsletter, which I loved. And then a year and a half later, I was club president. So in my 33 years in Rotary, I find that I often say yes to, to everything <laughs> because it just sounds exciting to me. As long as it's legal and moral, I'm going to say yes. As I said at the end of the program today, that was a real call to action for everybody. Just say yes. So if you look back in a year's time um, on your presidency, how will you judge it to be a success? My hope is that we turn the ship around and that we actually can quantify what I'm hearing anecdotally. Mm -hmm. I hear so many people saying, you know, I brought in five new members last month, or we started a new club, and we, you know, now we have a Rotor Act in our community. Mm -hmm. So that's the messaging that we've been sharing, that it's important to create a culture of starting new clubs, because that is what research is showing us. Mm -hmm. That's the way that Rotary is going to grow. We also want to work on attraction, and we also want to work on retention. It's not good to bring in 10 members if at the end of the year 15 leave. We don't, we don't get anywhere. So we want to work at, of, at all three of those things at the same time, attract, retain, and start new clubs. And I use a term, I use a phrase. I say when we do those things in our individual clubs, we're working on becoming simply irresistible. Yeah, I like that theme. And I want to expand upon that in, in, in a little bit more detail. So where I grew up in South Africa, my grandfather's Rotary Club was not the Rotary Club that I belonged to. And I heard you talk uh, with Stephanie Stuckey um, earlier today about you would prefer for Rotary meetings not to be so formal and be stage managed. Describe the perfect sort of Rotary Club for you and maybe expand upon the culture and the long history that we have, but how we are evolving through time to remain relevant. It's difficult for me to talk about the perfect Rotary Club because that's individual to every community. Mm -hmm. So what's irresistible to me may mm -hmm. not be the same irresistible thing in India or in Australia or in Canada. Right. But 
we have to we have to look at our own communities and and listen to what's out there and what people are saying and you're absolutely right rotary was done the same way for over a hundred years every club in the world met four times a month rang bells did the pledge and did the four-way test and took attendance and mm. there is nothing wrong with any of that mm. except that there are some people who are looking for a different kind of experience we have a product in rotary and that's our club experience so we have to pay attention to what a new generation and and new ideas that are coming forward so that's why our council on legislation in 2016 created new meeting models mm -hmm. so we have them i mean there are e-clubs for people who don't want to travel or can't get away from their desk and there are corporate clubs and passport clubs and satellite and cause-based clubs which is a really big phenomenon that's taking taking hold all over the world people who gather around a, a cause that they primarily want to work with uh, not necessarily meaning they're not going to address any of the other areas of service but they're focused on uh, maybe autism or focused on uh, uh, child slavery or, cho or you're focused on some issue and they band together around that particular cause so we know that people are looking for that kind of belonging and uh, the, the Council on Legislation helped us do that. Yeah. One of the things I took away today is your repeated insistence that the action plan behind the magic of Rotary is not a top-down playbook. It's a tool. It is. It is a tool that Rotary clubs can adapt to their own circumstances, right? Right. Occasionally I hear from clubs who say, Rotary shouldn't tell us what to do. <laughs> well, this isn't Rotary doing that at all. Uh -huh. This is a tool. This is a, the, the result of a strategic planning effort between Rotary and the Rotary Foundation mm -hmm. to help identify ways that clubs can look at themselves through the lens of four different priorities. Mm -hmm. If clubs want to use it, fine. If clubs don't want to use it, fine. But I encourage clubs to use it so that they can figure out how do we get even better at what right. we're doing. Right. So it starts with membership. It goes on to engagement. One of the other things that really resonated with me in the magic of Rotary was your insistence that Rotary is about promoting peace. Absolutely. And in a world where discourse is angry and shrill and we don't listen generously, what sort of role do you think Rotary can play in that regard? Rotary is a peace-building organization, not a peace broker. We're not going to stop war. We aren't going to negotiate the release of hostages. But what we can do is remind people, through the tools that we already have, the importance of peaceful environments. Mm -hmm. When we go into places and provide clean water, that's a peace action. When we give basic education to children and adults, that's a peace action. So Rotary's role is to go into communities and create the conditions that are necessary for peaceful living. And I always talk to clubs about the importance of the four-way test. Mm -hmm. You know, too many times clubs recite it but they don't really stop and think about what it means. Right. And I always say, do you live the four-way test or simply say it? Because right. there is a difference. It's powerful, four sentences, that if we do put our thoughts and our, our words and our actions through that filter, mm -hmm. it would create peace. I could not agree with you more. Rotary should be a place for courageous conversations to have happen. Mm -hmm. And one of the magic of our club is the long history of but for Rotary certain issues would never have been solved in our community because mm -hmm. people were talking past each other. Right. So good luck with that. And I hope you enjoyed the books we gave you from the Carter Center. I know I will. That's fantastic. You've given generously of your time. Um, I know it's been a long day. I can't end off without two more questions. Sure. So number one, um, what have I not asked that you'd like to get across to a Rotary member or a prospective Rotary member in our district? Well, to Rotary members, I just simply would like to remind them how important it is to share the magic of Rotary. Mm -hmm. We don't grow by accident. Mm -hmm. We grow intentionally. 
And it's up to every single one of us in Rotary mm -hmm. to share that message. And we know who these people are. Mm -hmm. They're our friends, our relatives, our associates, our neighbors. And so we really need to talk about what makes Rotary so special and why we're engaged in Rotary and sell it to people. It's not a membership committee's job or a membership chair. It's every Rotarian's job. Right. And for non-Rotarians, I simply want them to recognize that we are different. Mm -hmm. we, are not, we are not the kind of Rotary that they have as a perception. Right. You know, we're not that group of rich old guys who go out and eat. <laughs> uh, we're very different. We're diverse. You know, we, we have gender uh, neutrality now, and we just, mm. we just ha have expanded to make Rotary reflect what the world looks like. Right. Celebrating our diversity to keep things relevant. And then lastly, this is a demanding job. You travel <laughs> all over the world. Um, I'm sure it's stressful. What do you do for fun to decompress? Fun? What is that? <laughs> <laughs> um, actually, um, there are two things that I love to do that um, help me out. One is I'm an avid reader, mm -hmm. uh, especially Jack Reacher books. Oh, no kidding. And, oh, my gosh. I love, I love that series. <laughs> uh, I read a lot of that. And the second thing, you'll laugh, I like retail therapy. Oh, I do, do like to walk around. That doesn't mean I buy things all the time. I understand. I just like to walk around and see who has what. So those two things really keep me sane. Well, thank you for that insight. I hope you know that Atlanta has got some excellent retail therapy on your next visit. <laughs> I know. I was here at the last convention. <laughs> <laughs> but again, yeah. thank you so much for the time you've invested all day with our club leadership, with other clubs that we welcome to the Atlanta Rotary Club. Uh, we wish you the best of luck. Uh, as president of our wonderful organization. Uh, you've challenged us to own membership and engagement and to promote peace, and we're all about that with our theme for the year. So thank you very much for your time. It's been my pleasure, and I thank you for inviting me.